Hey guys, so one of the things that I get a lot of questions about, or one of the things that I think a lot of experts do wrong is setups. I don't think people set up nearly enough. So I'm going to talk about this, and I'm going to start running through some math so that you can kind of get a feel as to why I think this is the case, and why more people should be setting up far more often. So here's the first example. Uh, you have D-I-K-L-R-T-Z, and you have the option for a setup. You, know, you can play LUTs here, and you can set up klutz next turn. Um, by playing across. So first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what the value of the setup is, assuming it's not blocked. And then we're going to go through what the value is if it is blocked, and then we're going to compare the two and see whether the setup is worth it or not based on those numbers, like by comparing it to the next most favorable play. So Lutz is going to be 33 points. Opponent's going to score roughly 35. And assuming they don't block and the setup works, we're going to get about 54. Meanwhile, you know, Klutz is just going to be very standard. It's going to be 48. Opponent's going to score about 36 because of the Klutzy hook. And we're going to score about 37 because we have a slightly above average leave, so we're going to have a slightly better average than our opponent. Now I'm going to take a look at if the setup fails. And that's going to happen here about 10% of the time. Not very often is our opponent going to actually try to block this. Um, it's not very obvious at the setup. I could have just duplicate L's, I could have duplicate T's, or just nothing at all, or just consonants. There's lots of different racks I can have, so almost all the setups that are going to be blocked are going to be blocked here accidentally. They're not going to be blocked on purpose. And it's actually pretty hard to score and block that setup intentionally, so I don't think it's going to happen very often that the setup's going to get blocked pretty much at all. So I'm going to assign it about 10% of the time. Um, it's only very, very marginal racks where they're going to decide to block. So it's not going to be very often at all that they have a close decision and they try to block because of the klutz hook. And a lot of the times they may think that you are just going to play it normally anyway. So because of that, it's a very low amount. But the amount of sac points that they're going to be able to sacrifice is also very low. So on average, they're not going to sacrifice anything. They're just going to make what is normally the best play, but occasionally they will sacrifice a little bit. They have something that's very borderline. They might sacrifice some points. So I think it's more, more or less only going to be one point. So 10% frequency blocked and average sacrifice of one point. So at this point, it's just a matter now of figuring out how to combine those two factors together. So now we're going to compare the two plays. So as before, we had Klutz. It's at 49 points. And now we're going to compare Lutz. So 10% of the time, Lutz is going to be blocked. And they're going to sacrifice on average one point. So it's going to be 33 minus 34 not 35, 34, because they're sacrificing an average of one point. So we're going to take that one point off here. We're going to add 30, and we get 30, we get 29. Um, and we're multiplying it by 10%, because 10% of the time it's getting blocked. So this is only the times that it's not getting blocked. And we get 2.9 out of that. Now, 90% it's not getting blocked. So 90% of the time, it's just the standard math that we had before. 33 minus 35 plus 54. And based on that, we're getting 52. 52 times 0 0.9 is 46.8. 46.8 plus 2.9. It's 49.7. So basically, in this case, playing clots and playing lots are equal. One's worth 49.7 and one's worth 49. So you can set it up. You don't have to set it up. Pretty much equal plays. Not really much of a difference between the two at all. So here we have another position where our setup is an option. We have BDIJLOU. And we have the option of pull, which is going to set up the J next turn for JIB. Um, so again, we can do the math here, pretty simple. Pull is 21, opponent's expectation is 47, give or take, 
It's a very open board, so it's going to be a pretty high opponent expectation here. And assuming they don't block, the you're going to probably score 67. You're going to probably get to play Jib, and Jib scores 67. Uh, meanwhile, we have two different alternative plays if we so choose to and not make the setup. We have Joe, and we have Jubile. So Jubile is going to be roughly 32 minus 44 because the board's a little bit more closed. Plus 42 because Dio's probably slightly less than average, and most players are going to make the board a little bit more closed. And we have Joe, which is 38 minus 46 because it basically doesn't do anything to the board. And plus 35 because our lead is build, and build is not a very good lead on this board, but it's not terrible. Um, you still have a word in your rack, you still have some bingo potential. So the question here is how often is this blocked? And this is actually quite difficult to estimate because they're going to have the K probably about 15% of the time. They'll have the I, you know, some of the time too. They'll probably have the I another, you know, 40% of the time or something like that. So about like 6% of the time, maybe 5% of the time, they'll just have KI. But when they don't, they'll just block it themselves a few, fair percentage of the time, because this setup does look suspicious. It's very possible that you just have like a duplicate L or that you have like a really strong bingo rack or something like that, and you would make this sort of play here, but they will still block it some of the time if they have to sacrifice a kind of low amount, but not too low an amount. So, you know, anything that's not KI they or LI, they basically are going to have to sacrifice points here. So I would estimate that approximately 25% of the time this is getting blocked. And the average sacrifice is probably something around six points. Um, when they don't have those racks, they're going to have to sacrifice a lot. They're going to have to play through the E, or they're going to have to block by playing to like Lex in some way, like Flex or Plex or something like that. Um, any block is going to actually be pretty significant. Um, and they might block more often than that, but if they block more often than that, they're going to have to sacrifice even more points, because it's just not very lucrative for them to play through there, or play it around that area. You know, they'd have to play like to the N or the T, or most likely to the E, but sacrifice some points to do so. So in this case, we have 25% of the time it's blocked. That's going to be 21 minus 41, not 47, because again, they're going to have to sacrifice 6 points, so we add it in here. Plus 35, 15 times 0.25, which is... 3.75. 75 percent of the time we're just going to get the setup. We're going to get, and that again is 21 minus 47 plus 67, 41 times 0.75, just 30.75. So we have a valuation of pull of 30.75 plus 3.75 equals 34.5. And again, Jubile was 28. So it pulls worth it by 6.5. And, and again, I think this is pretty standard. I think that this is an example of another valuation where I think people think that the decision is close, but it's really not. Yes, you could get a lot more points, and you could get a better leave here, but you do definitely just take the setup. And I think this is persistent through a lot of setups that, of where they might block, they might not. They have some inclination to the setup, but it's not that clear that it's a setup. And this is one of those cases where, it, as you see, it's definitely worth it to take the setup in this sort of cases, because you get enough benefit without sacrificing too, too much. And yes, they block sometimes, but they don't block nearly often enough. You know, even if they block, let's say, 35% of the time, it would still be worth it, or even 40% of the time, because the amount that they have to sacrifice to block it would be so high. The more often that they block, the more points they're going to have to sacrifice, and therefore that makes it that much better for you. Even if we gave them some sort of like optimal blocking based on what they knew that you had, it would still be worth it to take the setup here. Finally, we have a third example here, and this is going to be a setup that's going to be blocked a lot. So in this case, your opponent opens with the word kitties, and you have an option. You can play the word 50. And 50 is going to set up a QI spot that's going to score quite well. It's going to score 68 points. But this is going to get blocked a lot, and that's primarily because there's another spot you can play 50. 
So because of that, with any sane rack, you're going to be playing over there because you don't want to give up QI or SI or XI unless you have it yourself. So this is going to get blocked quite a lot because anytime your opponent has anything even remotely good, they're going to start blocking it. Alternatively, you can just play QIS. So in this case, it's going to be a very, very different type of equation because now your play is going to get blocked quite often. But the difference in plays in terms of the worth is quite substantial. So again, we'll go with the setup works. 50 It's 33 minus 42, which is again the average score that your opponent's going to score on the board if they don't block. Plus 68, your leave is T, so it's going to be pretty random, which would be 59. And we have QIS. Which is 32 minus 38. You're leaving 50 in your rack, which is kind of a substandard leave here. There's not really any good spots for it. So it's going to actually be worse than average. So now we have a case of a rack where our setup is going to get blocked a lot. And a lot of people are just like, well, why should I ever make a setup if it gets blocked all the time? But as long as you get to play it sometimes, and the cost is significant enough, um, it's still going to be worth it. And in this case, we have a Q setup, a very, very basic, easy Q setup. Um, they, you have the word 50, and that's going to set up the word QI next turn, um, which is going to show 68 points. But it's also going to get blocked a lot. And the main reason it's going to get blocked a lot is because you also have the word 50 below. And because of that, it's very, very obvious that 50 above is just, you know, it's very obvious what it is. It's very obvious you have either the Q or the X or maybe some other strong I, but that you're going to have a setup, some play that goes there a huge percentage of the time. And because of that, they're going to block a huge percentage of the time. It's not going to just stay there. They're going to have to sacrifice some points to block there. And while you can think of a lot of letters that go there, you can, you know, they can easily have XI, they can have the W, they can have the B, they can have you know, P's, they can have all sorts of stuff that goes over there. You actually are going to have to block, and it's actually going to end up still being worth it in the long run. 50. Now let's assume they don't block. Setup works. 33 minus 42 plus 68 equals 59. And the obvious alternative here is just QIS. Um, QIS, though, is not that great. 32 minus 38 plus 35 equals 29. So this means that you have a net of 30 points of benefit, assuming it's not blocked. But of course it's going to get blocked a lot, so because of that it's not going to end up being that great. And 50 is not a very good play, it's a pretty bad play actually if it gets blocked. But Now we have to look at how often it's going to get blocked and how expensive it's going to be to block it. And as we said, it's going to get blocked a lot. So because of the other spot of 50, I'm going to guess that this is blocked very, very often, but it's actually going to cost quite a bit for a few reasons. Um, and it's not going to get blocked at all sometimes. The main reason it's not going to get blocked is because they're going to have a bingo or a really high scoring rack somewhere else. And that's going to be the main gist of why it doesn't get blocked at all. But even with some racks, it's going to get blocked, but it's going to cost them a lot of points to do it. Some rack that's heavy in one-point letters or heavy in vowels, it's going to cost them a lot. Um, there's no natural overlaps with really vowel-heavy racks, for example. And there's a lot of times they're going to have to forego things like double-doubles. They're going to have to forego um, the ability for them to clear racks correctly. If they have vowel, rack, you know, vowel consonant imbalance, it's going to be really hard to fix it by doing that. And they're going to score like 15 or 20 points. Um, they might have to do some sort of rack clearing play, but it might be something like GI, which is going to score like 20, which isn't exactly what you're looking for here. So they're going to have to sacrifice some points a very large percentage of the time, and it's actually pretty substantial as to the number of points that they're scoring, despite the fact that it's very easy to think of plays that fit in that spot. And if you're going to block the bottom, let's say, 40% of your range, it's going to cost some points. You know, Yeah, blocking with a third of your range is very easy. You're probably going to block a third of the time without even thinking about it anyway. But as you keep going down and down and down into other racks that we don't really want to block, it's going to cost more and more and more and more to block. 
to the point where it's actually going to get pretty expensive. So it's going to get blocked 85% of the time, but doing so is going to take a sacrifice. And the average sacrifice is about 9 points. Sometimes it will be 0, sometimes it will be 3 or 4, but sometimes it will be 15 or 20. And on average, it's going to be something approximating 9 points. And because of that, we get... And because of that, it's going to turn out that 50 is actually worth it. So when we do the valuation, if blocked 80%, 85 percent, or 86 percent, but 33 minus 33, because again we're taking nine points from the 42 plus 28. 28 times 0.85, which is 23.8. 15 percent of the time, it's going to stay clear. And again, again, we get 59. We get 33 minus 42 plus 68 plus 59. 59 times 0.15 is. 8.85 plus 23.8 and that gives us 32.65 which is greater than 29 from QIS. So it turns out that 50 is still worth it by 3.65. Still definitely worth playing even despite the fact that it's going to get blocked again 85% of the time. And this is a, another very good reason why it's worth making these sorts of plays a lot of the time. Because even though it looks pretty obvious that it's going to get blocked a lot and it is going to get blocked, it's going to cost your opponent a lot to block it. And because it's going to cost your opponent a lot to block it, it's actually worth making these setups a lot of the time, especially if the difference, the difference between the two plays is very large. So, you know, you, I hear a lot of people who talk a lot of times about what they can score next turn, but they don't consider a, the frequency that their opponent's going to block, or B, the amount of cost that it's going to cost them to block it next turn. Um, because it costs a lot. You may reduce your score the next few turns, but it'll also block your opponent's score next turn. So if you're sacrificing points to make a setup, and they're going to block it a lot of the time, they're also sacrificing. And if their sacrifice exceeds your sacrifice, the setup is still worth it. So because of that, I think that setups are very strong plays that not nearly enough people do. And I think and hope that this encourages a lot of expert players to make setups far more often than they already do. Hope you enjoyed. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave, you know, let me know, and I'll try to get back to you.